in topology and implicit modeling. Let's talk about why all of that is important next. All right, in topology and explicit modeling and implicit modeling, uh, why does it all matter? What's the deal? So to really understand the importance of uh, this tool and capability and technology and topology, you really need to have some background in two separate areas. One is kind of the rise of explicit modeling many, many years ago, and then the rise of 3D printing and additive manufacturing, the implications on modeling. Uh, and actually the convergence of those two is why in topology is really important. So let's talk about this one first. Let's talk about explicit modeling. So many, many years ago, uh, when parametric modeling, feature-based modeling, whatever you want to call it, uh, first came around, and when there was 3D modeling in general, the way those CAD applications tracked geometry is they explicitly defined the boundaries of the solid, right? So they, they explicitly captured in space um, in XYZ coordinates where the surfaces were um, for that. And if you, if you had a sealed volume, then that was a solid, right? And that worked really well. I mean, it was, it was fast uh, at the time. It was incredibly accurate. Uh, and if you had the recipe to create it, like all the features and parameters that drove it, well, you could recreate it and regenerate it, right? And that's the way that CAD applications have used 3D modeling for a long time. The inherent challenge with explicit modeling is that uh, it, because it captures where every single piece of geometry is in space, it inherently has a lot of information. Those models can be very, very big. And that's why early on we saw all sorts of uh, performance challenges around initially opening a model and regenerating models. Um, and there was a lot of investment in compute power, in um, improving those things in terms of ge the geometry kernel um, efficiency uh, and taking shortcuts um, and tweaking accuracy. These were all things that the early CAD applications did, but there were, there's always been this fundamental challenge of if you're going to track where every ex explicitly where every piece of geometry is it's going to be heavyweight so that's the first issue let's talk about the second issue with additive manufacturing so the industry has realized a lot of value in number one freeing up engineers from manufacturing constraints you can design something with a void in the middle of it that you could never manufacture from machining or any other traditional manufacturing method. But uh, with 3D printing and additive manufacturing, you can do that now. That's, that's great. That's awesome. Freeze them up. Let them be more innovative. That's great. The other kind of frontier of additive manufacturing, though, in 3D printing is the use of, I mean, lattices. And we're going to talk about another one here, another frontier here in a second. But lattices where um, the parametric traits and characteristics of the lattice changes over the course of the volume. You could imagine changing the density, like the structures and having spacing get broader. That's a simple term, uh, but have that vary over a space. Okay, so. Uh, that's something where you can suddenly finally control the structural stiffness of a part to meet very explicit, very specific engineering requirements. Okay, so now you're starting to have a lot more tools to address uh, engineering challenges. And, and kind of the next phase of that is varying material properties, even though it might be a solid piece of material, varying material properties, maybe changing the porosity of that as well. Um, so that the further you go along, it becomes more porous as you go from left to right. So the challenge here is if you have a lattice structure uh, that is maybe split up a couple different ways, 
For explicit modeling to capture that, you're talking about a heavyweight model. I mean, because you're talking about a lot of geometry in a small space. Geometrically, it not isn't necessarily that complex, and it becomes easier to define that um, using equations, which is it, it basically what implicit modeling is. But the fundamental challenge here is that with explicit modeling and the intersection with additive manufacturing and the way engineers are going with lattice structures and varying porosity and varying material properties, this gets overwhelmed very quickly. So suddenly we're, we're reaching a point where this suddenly can't even really represent where we need to go with this, with additive manufacturing. And that's why implicit modeling, which instead of capturing the, the spatial location of every piece of geometry ever in the, everywhere in the model, it basically captures the mathematical equations that define those spatial locations. Okay, so suddenly the models are far, much, far smaller, uh, much more lightweight, uh, yet they still capture all the very granular detail that you have with this. Okay, so fundamentally, implicit modeling offers an advantage when you're dealing with this next generation of manufacturing method. And that's what end topology offers. Now, there's all sorts of other capabilities in end topology. You can bring in models from explicit modelers, from all your traditional ones. You don't have to throw those away. They have a lot of workflows that kind of where explicit modelers feed end topology. Uh, it includes lots of simulations. You can define these lattice structures and the porosity and things like that. You can you can use all sorts of inputs like a simulation result to drive that. Uh, you can run other things like simulations internally to end topology. It has that capability. It is a tool that is growing very, very quickly. They're adding a lot of functionality um, uh, in a short time frame. Um, but, but it kind of, in my mind, <laughs> It all gets back to this fundamental difference between explicit modeling and implicit modeling in which can better support the next generation of manufacturing that seems, you know, it really is getting a lot of momentum. It's going to fundamentally change not only manufacturing, but how engineers design products. So that's the implication. That's it. Take care and talk soon.